And so uh, welcome to uh, Traveling with a Chair, uh, our live show. We're talking about Alaska this week. And we'll start with that when we talk about Alaska, there's some very interesting things about it. To get started, though, you know, there you go. Let us know where you're watching the show from. That's always our first question. And if you're watching on the replay, do me a favor, put it in the comments, because we like to see where in the world people are coming and to see our channel and, and to uh, join us. So let us know in the comments, where are you watching from? Also, uh, during the conversation, if you have any questions, please do me a favor and put the questions in the chat. We're going to try to answer all of them. Now, I, I won't swear you're going to get really good answers to all of them, but we're going to try to give you answers uh, to all of them. Um, so we'll talk about the fact that there are four kinds of Alaskan cruises. So uh, can you give us two of them, Cheryl? Um, for me, there's the paid for and the not paid for yet. Well, actually, I had something a little different in mind because in reality, you have cruises that go round trip from either Seattle or Vancouver. So you can have the round trip. You can have the northbound cruise and you can have the southbound cruise and the cruise tour and the cruise tour. Very good. OK, so we have Pam is with us, but she got off early just to see the show. Great job. Glad to have you. And we have Amanda Sickle. Uh, nice to have you with us. Yeah, uh, Pam's up there where it's cold. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so uh, we have those four kinds of cruises. And I need to, um, let me see if I can find my graphic. Um, actually, all right, I'll come back. I have lost the picture I want to show, but I'll share one. So this is a picture that gives you a little bit of a look. Let me try this differently. At Alaska. And this picture in reality does not even cover uh, down into Canada and Seattle. So we're talking about a, a huge distance. And the area, hopefully you can see the mouse, but the area that we typically talk about cruising if north if you're going northbound or southbound typically you would start in either vancouver or seattle and you would sail through the inside passage you'd come out through the gulf of alaska and you'd wind up in either seward or whittier now it, it just depends uh northbound that's the way you'd go southbound from you just do the exact opposite of that route so it, Again, you can get a little better picture here of it. There's um, Anchorage is there. Uh, like I said, Seward is there, and Whittier is in there. So those, this would be the area. You can see down here we have Seattle, and we have uh, Vancouver. So that would be typical for a northbound, southbound cruise. There are a few itineraries that might be a little bit different, but this is the primary uh the primary itinerary really is to northbound, southbound. A cruise tour will either start, let me go back, will either start in uh, Fairbanks, which is about right here, and it would start yeah, right in this area right there. You can just barely see the cursor, but right about there, and would go to Anchorage, uh, or it would actually it would go to Seward, uh, or the on the northbound cruise tour, you'd end in Seward or Whittier, and you'd pick up the railroad and go up to Fairbanks. So those are kind of the uh, the on the northbound southbound itineraries in the cruise tour. And where's that? There. So if we're talking about inside passage, then down at the bottom right corner, you've got Seattle and Vancouver. And you would go up as far as Juneau and then maybe over to Glacier Bay, right, which is right in here. Then what would happen is, is uh, you just turn around and come back down to either Vancouver or Seattle where your end port is. Well, what's nice about Vancouver and Seattle, um, for us in the past, our, if you notice, sometimes an airfare will be cheaper to one or the other. For us, it's usually been to Seattle. But one time the cruise we wanted went to Vancouver 
So um, there's a nice train. There's a train you can take from Vancouver to Seattle, and that that's a nice little trip. Yeah, we we enjoyed that trip. I'm gonna try to find one more picture out here. Is my picture I was looking for? So I'll share this one. And, and to put the, the, these distances in perspective, this gives you an idea of how how far it is in Alaska. So from Juneau to Barrow is about the same distance as Orlando to New York. If you slide this on the map so that uh, the islands are on the west coast, uh, it extends all the way to the Alabama area or, or South Carolina, almost on the east coast. So we're talking about really large distances up there. And that's going to come back to my next slide. Because we're talking about some of the things that are different in Alaska. Oh, sorry, let's do this again. <laughs> Alaska is big, cold, hot, amazing, and different. And all of those factors will come into play when you're planning for your trip. Yeah, you know, I, I, I've seen people post that, you know, that they, they wanted to go to Alaska and up for, go up for a week and see Alaska. And they were going to, you know, spend a week up there and try to see all of Alaska. And that doesn't work. <laughs> you know, yeah, even in a 15-day or 14-day package where you have the cruise tour and the, um, the, the, the northbound or southbound cruise, you still only see a very small percentage of Alaska. Uh, it is interesting that uh, in the uh, Inside Passage and southbound, northbound, you see a lot of places that you can't get to any other way than by a, a ship. Catch a can, you know, you fly or you take a ship in. Um, Skagway you can drive to. Haines you can drive to. You can't drive into Icy Strait Point and you can't drive to Juneau. So uh, they, there's some things that you can, oh, the easiest way to get there, let me say it this way, is as you take a ship to get there. And we are taking questions, but this comes into then our pre-cruise planning. Oh, wrong one. I, I, I am, we're learning technology. That'd be the best way to describe it. I'm trying to get it better. But I do have a, a request for you. If you're new to this show, if you haven't met Cheryl and I before, I really love it. If you look down and you see the subscribe button on your YouTube and it's red. That is an emergency warning from YouTube that you need to hit the button so that it'll change colors and you'll be subscribed. Shameless plug. What can I say? Okay. Um, so because of this, packing is different. And we'll talk about our last cruise to Alaska for just a minute. It was uh, in 2019. We took our granddaughter. We did a southbound cruise. We went from Anchorage to Seward on the, on the railway which was an amazing trip, but it rained the whole time. And it wasn't didn't make the trip bad, but it just wasn't what it would have been on a clear day. The train. It rained on the train. It rained the train trip, yeah. And we got to Seward, and it was drizzling in Seward. And when it's drizzling, you got that changes what you have to wear. And that's why uh, we'll just talk about uh, shoes for a second. I would make sure I had a pair of something that's waterproof uh, because – you know, it's a challenge if your feet get wet and cold. And in, it was really interesting because we went to Hubbard Glacier after that, and it was a rainy, drizzly day. After Hubbard Glacier, we had bright, sunny weather the whole time and nice and warm. We never had really ran into any more cold weather. Uh, and so that's the thing that you have to think about with Alaska is, is that the weather can change between ports. It can change in one port in, in the, in, during the day. Um, so there are things, we'll give you some things that you don't take to Alaska. Yeah. You're going to need your extra packing space for what you do want there. So, um, normally when we go to Alaska, we don't worry about our swimsuits, not, e not even for the hotel so much, um, sandals, flip-flops or snorkel, and you don't want one big coat. Yeah. And, and I want, there's pools and hot tubs on the ship and some people get in them. You know, we're a little older, and uh, usually we spend as much time ashore as we can, and we get back on the ship, uh, you know, we're not usually not headed for the hot tub. 
Now, we, I think when my granddaughter was there, I did get in the hot tub with her a couple times. But in general, we don't take swimsuits. You're definitely not going to go snorkeling in that water. Uh, you're not, well, it's, it's, uh, it's cold up there in the, the water, not the air. Because it, and I, I got to tell this story really quick. We were, um, our first cruise to Alaska, we were on the Norwegian Spirit up there. And we called some of our friends that were down in Minnesota, and we told them, that it was a real shame that we had to go to Alaska to warm up because it was warmer in Skagway than it was in Minneapolis that day. Um, it's not always that way. Some days can get really warm. Some days will be cool. Uh, as a result, how, what, do we, what do we need to take with us, Cheryl? So you need to take layers of clothes. That would be like some, you know, a couple sweaters, a nice mid-weight jacket. And, um, and then I also have on my list, I have... Um, a scooter cover and rain gear because you know you, you just you just don't want to get cold because if it's a if it's a rainy day it's more likely going to be cold and the rain will make it even colder so just stay dry make sure you have ways to stay dry and keep your scooter and your wheelchair dry yeah so so your outer layer you should have a waterproof outer layer and then uh, in general you know a sweater or like as Cheryl mentioned a midweight jacket to go under the outer layer or else your midweight jacket can be your waterproof layer. But when you're doing that, the one of the challenges that you want to think about is when you're out and around and, and you, it's a nice warm day and you start peeling those layers off. I, I'm a real fan of a backpack. Uh, I, I usually carry camera gear in it anyway, but it gives you a place to store that if, especially if you've got two or three people traveling together and everybody's coming out of, uh, out of the jacket and out of the sweater, and now you have all this stuff. Where are we going to carry it? Depending on what our what our plans are for the day. Anything else on the list? Um, some other unrelated things to well, if you if you're planning on um, doing like um, I, we we wouldn't do this. We're too old, and I can't do this. But if you want to go walk on the glaciers or you have family members who want to walk on the glaciers, then you probably do want gloves, scarf, and a hat for that. You know, just keep again keep warm and dry. But unrelated to clothing, because um, especially when you're going along the inside passions, there is something to see on that one side of the ship and sometimes on two sides of the ship all the time. So you, and binoculars would be really handy. There have been times when we saw like um, animals running along the cliffs or the edges. And if we'd had binoculars, we could have uh, really enjoyed seeing them up close. And your camera, you want if, if this might be the time or the trip to really buy that zoom lens. Because again, there's so much to see. It's a lot of um, from the train rides or from the ship. Um, even in town, there's just um, you know just so many different places to use it, and you'd probably really appreciate having it. And then um, it's funny because in later in the season, you might not think of this, but later in the season, I've heard you might really want your mosquito gear because um, if mosquito it's mosquito repellent, yeah, if, yeah, mosquito stuff because. I'm thinking if, if a mosquito is healthy enough to live in Alaska, it's probably a pretty strong mosquito. You might might really bite you, so you might want to protect yourself. And I've heard that they can get bad at the end of the season, not so much. Well, we've always gone at the beginning of the season so far, and we haven't had run into that. Okay, we're going to take a couple of questions, and we're going to come back to some more of it. Oh, by the way, does anybody know what the state bird of Alaska is? Uh, put it in the comments if you do. So... <laughs> Uh, Amanda said, we're cruising on Royal Caribbean southbound cruise in August. Is the weather very different in each area? Okay, so the the cruise we were on, okay, and I can only talk about that cruise because weather in Alaska is very much, uh, very, very, it, it changes, but not necessarily different for each area. It's just that there was a cold front that was kind of moving through, in, you know, on the north end of the cruise. And so that's why Hubbard Glacier was uh, drizzly and why um, Seward was that way in Anchorage. You know, we just, we came in and that was at the end of May and we just picked up, a, uh, we happened to get a weekend that was stormy. The next weekend might have been bright and sunny. I don't know. But that's one of the things that you have to be prepared for. Uh, I want to talk about two things that Cheryl mentioned. So for those of you, like Cheryl travels with her, with her wheelchair or uh, this next cruise will have actually have a scooter from Scoot Around. And they provide us one courtesy, so we'll talk about it. So that's that shameless plug out of the way. Um, but the scooter, when you're on shore, 
is really useful. But the one thing that you're going to want is you're going to want a rain poncho. And in, I linked a, a, a page of products that we've tested and we use on when we travel. And so if you go to that page, it's it's on my blog. But there's a link in the description for the video. You'll see down toward the bottom of that, there's a rain poncho. And that worked really well in Seward with Cheryl Scooter. It, yeah, it's a scooter. It's a scooter poncho. It's heavy. The wind won't blow. I mean, you'd have to have some really strong wind to blow it up. But it is heavy, and it takes a lot of room in the suitcase. But it was definitely worth it. Oh, I, I gotta, I gotta go to this answer. We're gonna got some other questions. Um, yes, you gotta. So write here's that. the answer: the <laughs> unofficial state bird in Alaska is the mosquito. Yes. <laughs> uh, most most people that live in Alaska carry shotguns so they can shoot them before they s steal their kids. <laughs> it might be a slight exaggeration, but I will say this. I was up in, in Northern Canada and was out fishing and I had a, I had long underwear on and a flannel shirt and the front of my shirt was covered with mosquitoes with a little oil drilling, Derek set up drilling for blood. And they were getting some through all of that. So <laughs> they can be pretty, pretty fierce. Um, and, and that's one of the things that is different in the season. I don't think we've ever seen, you know, we've gone twice in the end of May. I don't think we've ever seen a mosquito. No, we've never, ever had any in the early season. It's just too cold up there. They haven't really taken off yet, I guess. And I don't know if global warming is going to change that or not, but we've always gone like pre-school out. Even when we took our granddaughter out, we um, snuck our, her out a week early. Yeah, she was a good student. They said she could go for education purposes. <laughs> yeah. But um, so let me ask, uh, let's go to Pam's question here. We'll talk about that and then we'll go back to. So what uh, What about the beginning of June? I'm thinking that is the question you're asking. The beginning of June should be fairly nice weather, but that doesn't mean that in, you know, like I said, we were uh, like the right before Memorial Day weekend in the U.S. when we were uh, got rained on in Seward and at uh, Hubbard Glacier. But like I said, that was a storm passing through, not in a, a, an everyday occurrence. So just keep that in mind. But that's why, I, and that's kind of why the point of that slide earlier is that you have to be prepared for change. But you want to be, a, you know, and that's why we said not a big heavy jacket, because a big heavy jacket is fine on a cold day, but a big heavy jacket on a day that's just a little milder than you like. And that's now you got something you got to. Uh, lug around and figure out what to do with. And it's not that it's going to take up too much room in your suitcase. So you're not going to want it probably in the airplane. So that's why I like to take a sweater. Even when we travel anywhere, I get cold easily. I like a sweater and kind of like a suede type weight jacket. And then I can alternate them or put them both on or take them both off. And they're not really in the way. And, and that's kind of what you want for Lanska that and something to keep you dry too. Yeah, I mean, staying dry. And Cheryl and I always, no matter where we're going on a cruise, carry like these little emergency rain ponchos just in case it dumps. One other thing that we'll uh, talk about, uh, and then Cheryl's got something to say too, but um, along with keeping things dry, you want to keep your camera dry. So Cheryl has some uh, like, uh, let's call them rain ponchos for your camera. Because if you're out and you're taking pictures and it starts to rain, you know, especially if you want to keep taking pictures, you need some way to keep the camera dry. Oh, the other thing I was going to say, I do for myself, because I do get cold easily, is when I went to Alaska last time and it worked out really good for those cold days, I take an, like a pair of long underwear and, and just put those on and make sure of your jeans that are, that'll fit over top of them. And if it gets to be really cold, that and, you know, and a sweater and a jacket and I was, and I was just great. I was fine. And then on the warmer days, I just I didn't use those. So, yeah. And again, you're thinking about okay, what's easy to pack, and and, and most importantly, what's easy to take on, and put off. That's the the real challenge. I love this comment. Pam said she's going to get pack those tonight or binoculars. Yeah, binoculars are really um, you you just have so much to look at. And that's as go back to Cheryl's comment about a longer lens on your camera, because the inside passage is an amazing trip. And, and literally lots of times there'll be land both sides within a quarter of a mile uh, of the ship. So, I mean, you're sailing in, in a fairly narrow uh, passage and, the, you know, the ship's kind of right in the middle. So what you're doing is you, you need to be able to look both ways and you want, uh, you know, your camera to be able to, if you want to 
if you see a bear over on the shore, it's better if you can get some zoom. Shell and I, and the, the, the camera's in the description as well. Shell's got a 1200 millimeter autofocus uh, DSLR, but the, it's, uh, you know, the zoom is in the camera, so she doesn't have to change lenses out. And I have one that's a thousand millimeters, so I can get a long ways out. The challenge, obviously, the longer the lens, the more stable. So we will carry a travel tripod with us. And, and the, the purpose of the travel tripod is so that if we happen to be somewhere and there's animals that are not moving a lot, where you, you might be able to set the tripod up pretty quickly and grab you know, uh, a longer range shot, but it, where it's steady and you get, you're able to focus and you get a nice picture. There, the one thing that you will not run out of is things to take pictures of. So you either want lots of memory chips or what I do is I carry a little uh, USB uh, solid state drive, a terabyte drive. And every day we tend to download them uh, in uh, on the, onto the computer. And that just serves a couple of purposes. First of all, it organizes when we go to start making videos, we've got everything in one place, which makes it easy. But it also means that when we go out, our cameras and our phones have space to, uh, you know, for, for more pictures. One more question. Okay, we got another question here. Yeah, and I was going to say, yes, Rhonda's asking, will my poncho also keep the scooter dry? Yes, it does. It's a scooter poncho. It's just, it's really long. It's big. I'm not sure. It might be almost a little too long for... Uh, for the new wheel uh, scooter that does, it's really just like an electric wheelchair. It's very long and I'm tall and it had me completely covered and it covered the scooter handles and everything when I really needed it to. So, um, and it's heavy so that I didn't have to worry about it blowing up. Yeah. Cause I said that it was kind of a raw day and you know, when we went to Seward that day, but then we've actually used it in the Caribbean too, because to keep our cameras dry, we, I could throw everything on my lap and throw the scooter punch over us and keep everything for those quick, quick, heavy showers that come and go. Okay. Any other questions on, uh, is there any other notes on what we pack? No. Um, oh, actually, I, I will say this. For those in your family that are able-bodied, you know, uh, you probably want to pack some hiking boots because there are trails everywhere you go that you can go and, and hike. And they can be anywhere from half mile to a quarter mile to five miles. And so there are lots of places to get off the pavement and go explore. And so I would encourage that. Again, you want, uh, they don't necessarily have to be big, big, heavy, but you want them waterproof and you want them where they got good traction because there will be lots of rocks and, uh, you know, you'll probably run into some muddy spots and, and things like that. So I would encourage you to think about that, you know, as you're packing and think about what, what it is you like to do because this is, and, and again, go back to differences in, in uh, the crews, is in Alaska, you're not going to have beach days. Yeah, that just doesn't happen up there. I, you know, it'd be a rare thing that anybody, you know, at least along the, the coast, goes in that water. It's cold. So you typically don't have beach days. Now, that doesn't mean you might not want to do some beach combing. Uh, Ketchikan, there's some, some things along the beach where people go down and see. And tidal, there's tidal pools that you can go down and look in. You know, those are definitely not accessible. But for the, those that are able-bodied that are traveling, there's just lots of things. So you want something with good traction that can keep your feet dry. Okay. There's a question. Got another question. From Tawani. Do you need to take a tender? If so, is there any difficulty for someone that is physically challenged? Okay. In general, in Alaska, there are not a lot of tender ports. Sitka, if you're going to Sitka, might be a tender port depending on the particular day you're there. Uh, Juno is going to be a dock. Skagway's a dock. Ketchikan's a dock. Icy Straight Point has two docks. So depending on how many ships are there that day will affect whether you tender out or not. But uh, a lot less tender ports. Um, I'm trying to think. We were on Nor uh, Norwegian when we went to Icy Straight Point, and we were anchored out and tendered. Uh, it wasn't a roll-on type of tender, but uh, Cheryl could have gotten ashore. She just elected not to. You just collapse the wheelchair, and you know they'll help you get step onto the tender because in that day they were using the ship's lifeboats. Yeah, they were. Um, my husband and granddaughter decided to go on a, one of those fishing trips, and I wasn't interested in that. And I thought this is a good day for me to have a quiet day on the ship. So that's what I did for the tender day. But you're, I think, I believe your cruise line should be able to tell you if it's going to be a tender port or not ahead of time. Yeah. And 
I'm trying to think. Um, let's see what else I have on my, on my thing. Oh, let's, we're going to talk about traveling up. Let me find my banner for that. Oh, another plug. Do me a favor. Hit the like button. And if you know anybody that might like this content, please share it with them. They can watch the replay if they, if they don't get the live. Uh, we appreciate all of those things because that helps YouTube decide that what I have is worth uh, sharing with other people. So this one is for us something that we have to think about because Cheryl has some mobility. She can walk. She takes her wheelchair because it has a reclining back. Her, her back is fused from basically from her shoulder blade to her tailbone. And sitting upright like she is now, it becomes very uncomfortable very quickly. And so we have, uh, we're coming out of uh, the airport in Raleigh, North Carolina. So it's Raleigh to um, Seattle. Seattle, then to, to Anchorage, and then Anchorage bus to uh, down to the cruise port. And so my first rule of thumb when I travel is I, I try to never fly in on the same day. We're going to fly most of the way on our first day of travel. We're going to fly to Seattle, and then we're going to get into Seattle about 10 o'clock in the morning, and we're going to chill out in Seattle that day. Seattle's a great port, and we'll talk about it uh, some more. I'm trying to get somebody from Seattle on for an interview. But Seattle might be my favorite major city cruise port. There, It is beautiful. If you if you have time in Seattle, ooh, I just saw something we might go do. Uh, I'm always looking for opportunities to film. Uh, but they have a ferry system that goes out all the islands around there. So you could go out and ride the ferry, and I'm betting that you'd see whales and a bunch of stuff just riding the ferry in, in, in Puget Sound there by Seattle. So, But we're going to fly to Seattle, and then the next morning we're getting up really early. Uh, we have like a 6 o'clock flight and puts us into uh, Anchorage about 8.30. Now, we have a uh, transfer, I think it was at 11 or 11.30, we're going to take to go to Seward. And in this case, rather than take the train, which is a longer ride, it's a five-hour ride. For Cheryl, again, we've already flown three hours. We can do a two-hour bus ride or two-and-a-half-hour bus ride, something like that, or we can do a five-hour train ride. It's easier on Cheryl physically if we take the bus. For those of you that can manage it, I my favorite thing, is that train? It is. It is just an incredible, incredible, incredible uh, trip. And there is a video on on the channel about it. We did that before, but we spent the night before in, in Seattle. In you know, in, I mean, Anchorage. in Anchorage, and yeah. So like for me, just the the flight to get to Seattle is really a big deal for me. For example, when we went to LA, we had to stop. We had. We can't take. We usually don't take nonstop flights, so we had to stop in Dallas for like four or five hours. I have to lay back and rest my back before I get back on. So since Seattle is going to be, a, it's a one, it's nonstop, I think. So I yeah. said, okay, then I that's I'll be shot for the day after that probably. So we might do a little bit of easy stuff, and also the advantage of with my wheelchair, I can if we do get, go somewhere, I can just lay back and rest for a while before we go on to something else to look at. Yeah, but the so train the train was beautiful. Yeah, the train's incredible. I, I highly encourage it. Next, there's a video. There's a video and actually an interview with the people from the train company. But my, so for us, we needed to break it up. If you can go uh, get up there, if you live like on the West Coast, it's easy. Uh, depending on now for Pam in Nova Scotia, she's got a, a long, long trip. So, uh, but she's going to be closer than we are. But you want just so think about that because of the length of time. Um, the nice thing is we'll have like a three-hour flight, two-hour ride, so that'll be about five hours. We'll get to Seward uh, in about the right time to start getting on the ship. Now, the ship doesn't leave Seward until late. We'll talk about that in uh, in our next episode. But, you know, she'll, we'll just get there, and we may do a little bit of something in Seward, but probably we'll just go get on the ship because once we're on the ship, we can start to relax, get unpacked. I'll uh, probably lay, lay back quite yeah. a bit before dinner. Okay, now I have to tell a secret on Cheryl. Normally speaking, if Cheryl gets food in her and she gets to the stateroom, her eyes snap shut. She's like one of those dolls. You know, you stand them up and their eyes pop open. You lay them down, their eyes go closed. 
Yeah, that's the way she usually is when she gets on a ship. Yeah, the ship's put me to sleep. When the ship starts moving, if I've eaten anything, I'm going to get sleepy. <laughs> She's going to get a nap. So that you know that works out and all of that, and then we'll be awake for sail away. Okay, so next week, uh, we'll talk about what we're going to do next week. Uh, we're going to start with, uh, we'll talk maybe a little more about the transfer, but mostly we're going to start with, we're in Seward. What are some of the things to see and do in Seward? We're going to talk about the sail away and the um, trip to, I think we're going to talk about the trip that goes uh, to Hubbard Glacier. And so there's kind of like a, almost a sea day in there. We'll talk about that because there are some things that you want to keep in mind. And, and part of it will depend on your itinerary because you look at what times you're in port. So we're in, uh, actually, I'd have to look and see, but uh, one of the cruises I looked at recently, and I've been looking at a bunch of them, had like in, in Juneau, you're there from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. So you have 12 hours in Juneau. Uh, when you get back on the ship, if you've enjoyed Juneau to the full, you're not going to want to do specialty dining or anything like that. You're probably just going to want to grab something and, and head for the bed. Um, so sea days are a good days to take advantage if you want to do specialty dining. So we'll talk more about it next week. I want to say thanks to all of you that have joined us. I hope you've gotten, in fact, do me a favor. If you've enjoyed this and found it helpful, put a note in the comments just so I know. And I have actually have comments up here. Maybe there's another question. Okay. So we have, thank you from 20. Uh, Pam said she is a long, expensive trip. Uh, Pam said, thanks. So just let us know. And, um, hopefully, like I said, we'll see you guys next week. Uh, we'll be here same time, same, same bat. For those of you that are old enough to remember this, probably very not few of you, but oh, same bat time, same bat channel. Thank you, Amanda. Yeah. Uh, Amanda said, thanks. Uh, I, like I said, I appreciate oh. everybody being here. Oh. Well, someone else is headed to Alaska. Oh, thank you. Yep, I guess they're going to two. Oh, oh, two yeah. Moments. Also, <laughs> um, yeah, you guys, you guys will love it. I, I, I you know, and Sean and I tell people, and because a lot of or a lot of our friends are like island people, and I'm like, islands are cool. I don't mind going to an island, but they're not Alaska. If I tell people that if I had, uh, if I had one cruise that I had to take for the rest of my life, it would be Alaska. That's how much we enjoy our time in Alaska. There are so many things to see and do. And like I said, we, as we talk about these ports, because we're going to go through all of the ports, uh, spend one show on all the ports, and we'll talk about what we're going to do, what some of the other things are, that there are to do in Alaska. And, and I've got to believe that everybody that goes will just come back and they'll, just, they'll be blown away. Anyway, let's see who we have. Oh, uh, yep. Me Too oh. Drama, June 4th. Uh, so, Very nice. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll are you, see you there. Pam, are you sailing, sailing out of Vancouver? But we'll see if I got a minute. Yeah, well, what she'll tell you is you guys are about a, oh, a minute or so behind us. We'll I was going to say, we'll be in Vancouver uh, in, in that time frame probably. So uh, maybe we could meet. It'd be fun. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. oh and, and Drama Mama, uh, June 5th. Very nice. Uh, Pam said she wished, yeah. Okay. So those of you that found me, know me on the from the Facebook group, just DM me and uh, 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 we can talk about what we're up to then. Oh. Yeah, so we got this one and then this one said. Um, uh, yeah. Wish, yeah, Seattle would be cheaper, but it'd be longer. And then. Uh, yeah, oh, made. Rhonda's so our, our first going. group going. Great. Yeah, so you, oh. you can tell us how, what you thought. See how, see how wrong I was when you come back. <laughs> Pam said she's going back to back. And, and I, I would love to do that. And that's a, that, that'll be a subject for another lesson because sometimes oh, you can yeah. make a huge deal on back to backs. Yes, that, that happened as well. You might, if you can leave your airfare where you can change it without spending a fortune, you can do a back to back sometimes for really inexpensive if, if they know you're on the ship already and they've got a bunch of empty cabins they usually make a really good deal on the ship <laughs> yeah yeah and may is a great time for that so anyway thanks so much i've enjoyed the conversation with you guys um we look forward to seeing you next week and we'll say goodbye bye thanks